<laughs> do you think he does nothing? Do you think the school could run without a president? <laughs> if we live in a greedy capitalist society, which you probably agree with, deal to this about economics. But like, what? <laughs> the deflection. Hey, hello, hello. I cannot hear you. I gotta change my settings. Testing, one, two. Can you try again? Hey, hello, hello. Hey, I hear you. You're just soft, I guess. Oh, well. Uh, how's it going, buddy? It's going pretty good. I just got off work. What's up? Uh, nothing much. I saw you uh, responded to my TikTok video. I uh, gave you a holler, and here we are. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, what, what did you think? Well, I mean, obviously I disagreed with everything. That's why I, <laughs> I reached out to talk, right? Yeah, right on. Um, I, so I made two. Uh, are you referring to the Andrew Tate one? Or I honestly forgot the other one I made. Um, one had to do, I think, with the value of labor. I don't remember what the Andrew Tate one was. But, um, yeah, we can run through both of them if you want. Yeah, sure. Okay, so value of labor. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel like... Um, I think the question was, how do you like? What is what is the value of any of labor in, in an economy? Is generally like what people are willing to pay for it, which usually correlates to the like supply of people that are able to do that particular job, and then how many people want that particular job done. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but there, I, I feel like there's just so much more we're missing, right? Like, I feel like um, even even just like geographically, if you're doing the same job in a different country, like your labor is going to be a different, um, a different price. Um, yeah, it could be because the demand for that particular job might be different in different parts of the world, right? Like, let's say I'm a really good like ice fisher and I move to Florida. I'm probably not going to get paid much for, for that job in that location, right? Supply and demand can change depending on where you're at geographically, change in like how much, you know, like what time period you're in or what the current demands of the economy are, right? I mean, yeah, sure. I gotta ask, are you streaming right now? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry, I'm always streaming. Based on- uh, Okay, where are you streaming on? Uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash- I got you, I got you, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know, I, I, if I remember correctly, uh, from the TikTok. Do you want me to, I can, I can just play this down, it's like a 40 second one, or 45 second one, so I can know exactly what you said, and then you, you want to do that Okay, real quick? sure stuff. Okay, yeah, let me play that real quick, hold on one sec. Compensated based on the demand for your particular set of skills. Well, I would a great point, Destiny. Let's ignore every other material factor that determines the price of wages. Let us also avoid the topic of class analysis and inherited wealth. Looking at material conditions and the relationships of people and the means of production is just far too fucking complicated for this Twitch streamer. Jeff Bezos gets paid because he's super fucking skilled and no one else could probably ever even do his job ever. Uh, God <laughs> used to decide who was the richest oh man in society. Oh my god, your chat is so no. funny, bro. Don't worry about chat. Don't, we don't worry about them right now. Who was the richest man in society. That was old and archaic and now we have the market, which is new and innovative and totally totally different totally different the market is rational and justified ignore any similarities to feudalism you don't get compensated based on how hard you okay. work you get compensated based i remember on more about this okay skills. so it seems like in general there, this is like a common talking point here people feel like ceos are paid too much or that ceo jobs aren't harder than like um uh, yeah that's exactly my point yeah uh, actually i'd like to further i think anyone could do anyone could do Jeff Bezos job. I think in theory, like if you're given the resources and the time, you could, anyone, there's nothing stopping anyone from doing what Jeff Bezos does. There's nothing unique about Jeff Bezos. Well then why don't, why doesn't everybody just start a multi-billion dollar company? Because not everyone has the means that Jeff Bezos has. I mean, c correct? Like just. Do you know how much money Jeff Bezos had when he started off with Amazon? Off the top of my head, no, I could not name that figure. <laughs> Well, sure. I was just I, like my understanding, and I could be wrong, but I way back in the day, Amazon just sold books. Like it was like it was a small. It's not like he started off with like like Donald Trump, like a hundred million dollars, and then okay. Up. And again, I think like geographically, like okay, you're selling books like in in the United States and the Imperial Core, like that that the the geographic lends itself to an, to to another advantage. I think. Well, I'm just saying you. 
I think that Jeff Bezos was able to accomplish something that was relatively unique, even for somebody who was able to attend college and everything, right? I don't think that you could say like everybody could be Jeff Bezos, right? It's probably not a fair statement, no? I mean, I, I think I think anyone given the, the same resources and circumstances could in theory become Jeff Bezos, yes. If you're born at the time he was, for uh, frontlining the industries that he was, indeed, yeah. If you had the upstart, if you had the capital like he did, then yes, you could do it. Uh, what, I, what I'm trying to point out is that he's just not—he's not particularly special for doing this. I, I, don't, I don't think so whatsoever. And especially when you when you take into account like the actual work that goes on at Amazon, like I don't see him coding the UI on Amazon's website. I don't see him moving boxes. Like he's not actually doing the productive labor whatsoever. Well, yeah, but all of those productive jobs are a lot easier to learn than probably managing a multi-billion-dollar company, right? Oh my god. What? I mean, I, I, I don't know, man. I think I'd rather be in Jeff Bezos' position. I think I'd have an easier time as an occupation as Jeff Bezos than working at one of those fucking shithole warehouses. It's, it's, it's not about an easier time or it's just, it's a matter of like how many people could theoretically do a given job. If training somebody to drive a forklift or be like a front end designer or developer is probably easier than getting somebody that's competent enough to make decisions, the correct decisions for like a huge company. That's probably a significantly harder thing. Dude, to what do. decisions, what, what groundbreaking decisions is he making? See, I, I think you have this fable of, of what CEOs do day to day. Uber and so and some of these other very large tech companies have ran successfully without ex CEOs, without present executives. Okay. If you can have an entire company that's mm -hmm. working, right, that's functioning, that's making money mm -hmm. without a literal CEO, what is the purpose of a CEO? Okay, well, here's a question. If you think that a CEO has no purpose, why do companies have CEOs with public boards? If you've got a board of investors, why would they pay a CEO that's, so much money that doesn't do anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, that that question, there there's a lot to that question, I think. Um, well, let's think about it. So uh, an investor sitting on a board gets money based on how well the company does. Why would they throw away money towards a CEO that gets paid a lot when they could just instead split that money up amongst themselves? Because in part, you know, like being paid to not do anything is is, is uh, central to the American economy. Wait, let's, uh, a labor uh, that your... is ultimately unproductive gets paid a lot more. This is this is from again. I know you don't do books, Destiny, but this is David Graeber's bullshit jobs. That, that, that's a book that, that covers this topic kind of in detail, where there's, there's a lot of jobs in this economy where you don't actually produce anything valuable, but you still get paid. Okay, so that wasn't my question. My question was, let's say that I'm sitting on a board with like other people, <laughs> okay. and we're trying to figure out like, how do we want to make the most money? Because you, well, let's get a little bit more fundamental. Do you agree that a, that a board of people that all have ownership stock in the company, they just want to make money, right? I, I that that is indeed one of their motives is to okay. generate capital yeah. yes so if they want to make money why would they yeah. waste money on a ceo when they could just divvy that money up amongst why themselves? do companies waste money on middle managers man why do there's so many companies banks hospitals universities have bullshit jobs they have jobs that all all, all across the country there are companies that have jobs that don't produce anything yes Okay, I'm going to ask this question a third time. My, my university, I'm trying to ask, is, university. Yeah, I'm trying to ask why would a board have a C Why would they pay money, exorbitant money, or give shares to a CEO? Why would they dilute their own investment? Why would they hurt their own pocketbooks to hire a CEO if he didn't do anything? Why would they do this? I mean, it, it, it in part, it in part, this is this is the, the organization of, of companies in the U.S., yes, like... No, you don't have to have the CEO. Like you don't have to pay them a lot of money. No, I mean, no, like, you don't have to. You don't, there's no, nothing demanding you to do that. You have to have a CEO for wait, like what? a certain... You have to have a CEO if you want to file like a C-Corp, sure, but you don't have to pay them a lot of money. You can just pay them $1, just make a random dude CEO, right? So I'm asking why... But CEOs get paid a lot of money in the United States to, to run these huge companies. Why would a board of investors pay money to a CEO if their incentive is to just make money themselves? Why would they pay money to a CEO? Dude, I, I feel like I could answer this question at a better time, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, like, I, I still, I still don't see see this as a point of um, 
you know, we're talking about CEOs not doing anything. That, that, that doesn't actually, you know, counter my point. You're asking why would they pay someone? Well, okay, I don't have the whole story of like why would, why, why do CEOs get paid such ceremonious amounts? Well, the um, answer, I mean, I can give you an answer. In, the, in that capacity, but well, what's the answer? Okay. The, the answer is because these are people that are in charge of leading companies and making like incredibly costly decisions <laughs> that could either be massively beneficial or massively detrimental to how the company functions or operates. Right. Okay. Okay. And if again, okay, mm -hmm. again, if a CEO is so is so vital and necessary to the functioning of a country company, explain to me how a company like Uber runs without multiple executives. <laughs> because I, the shit I don't runs know. What you're, paper, I don't know what you're Destiny. talking about. So Uber has a CEO. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, right now, but they went. I, I'm, I'm implying they went through a period without multiple executives. You can probably have some. CEO. You can probably have some period of time where you're looking for new executives, but ultimately you want some. I mean. A car will run if the driver passes out for a few minutes before it drives <laughs> off the road. Like, I mean, what do you mean? That's not an argument for anything. Okay, a car, a, a, a driver passing out, again, is a lot different than an entire company working, right? There's a lot of moving parts there. Yeah, the CEO, the more, CEO doesn't- A lot of cars in the case of Uber, a lot of cars. The CEO of a company isn't like running the day-to-day -day, like line level stuff of a company i'm sure that a company could run for a while without just like a a restaurant could probably run for a little bit without a supervisor it could run maybe a bit longer without any managers probably a bit longer without any store owners right the higher up you go the longer you could like have that person theoretically step away before noticing but like like what do you i'm just like what do you think happens when like the boss leaves man like everything just falls to shit like <laughs> I, I, I find I find workers are often competent enough to, to, to carry out their own tasks. But their but their own tasks aren't enough to keep everything running. Yeah, evidently they were in Uber's case. No, because it wasn't just line level employees. There were probably still a lot of VPs and everything okay. working in that company. Okay, okay. We I, we could use a restaurant as an example if you want. Okay, I mean, I, I, I'm just yeah. gonna the, the specialty of my knowledge here is specifically at universities, and universities run on a similar a similar organization and basis as a lot of corporations in the U.S. Um, the university pays presidents, college presidents, exorbitant sums, executives, exorbitant sums for people. Again, these are people who don't do much. And in the case of a college and a university, it's being able to say, well, this is our mascot. It's be it's being able to provide patronage positions to people. That's one of the reasons, right? And that's a reason you can see at corporations as well. Okay. The, are you what, what are you going to university right now? What year are you? Are you like freshman, sophomore, junior? I'm a junior. Okay. This is what I would suggest. Ask a professor and administration or write a letter to the school president and say, hey, what do you do for your job? I think the answer would surprise you. It sounds like you think they just sit uh, dude, in an office dude, all day and spin their what, chair around. what he does for his job. You Destiny, clearly, actually, you think all I they do is, here, is ask, a, just because you live somewhere doesn't mean you know anything about what the jobs are of the people around you. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so uh, are, you, are you saying you, you know more about the day-to-day the -day life of my university? president no, not, than me oh, and then so. and yeah, again, so. like, have you read on this subject at all no but i know how businesses run I can have make, you I can... read on this subject at all nope but i know how businesses run so okay I so Destiny, i'm gonna ask uh -huh. you i have one question uh -huh. i've really wanted to ask you since i've came on here yeah and that is when was the last time you read a book cover to cover um the last time i read a book cover to cover i think a couple weeks ago i read a book called the great divorce by c.s lewis and then a week before that it was uh, Mere Christianity by the same author. Are, are, any, are any of the books you read of political philosophy, political history, Destiny? Um, I just got a book on Wittgenstein I'm going to read. I've read Problems of Philosophy by Bertrand Russell. Um, I read a book called Lying About Hitler that had to do with that David Irving case. Um, I read a book called uh, Against the Backlash that had to do with Boston and federal politics in the 60s. I mean, I don't know. I read random shit sometimes. I don't read a lot, but what, what does that have to do with anything, though? I mean, I mean I'm just saying, bro, because it's like you're telling me like... Oh, I read an you're interview telling the author me, of a book called Politics about, Republic, about yeah. what college executives do. And not only am I, again, living experience, like I know intimately, right? Well, but you don't. I'm, I'm telling you without, without making weird appeals to like what books you read. I'm telling you that if you don't think a school president does anything, you don't know. That's like a fact. I'm not asking you what books you read. You just don't I'm not, know. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying like literally anything, right? I'm not saying they, they wake up and then like that, they, they just do whatever they want. But I'm saying a lot of their functions are one, ultimately hollow and I think unnecessary. Okay, if that's the case, 
then why don't you start a school with no school president and make more money than anybody else, right? This is this is gonna go back again. Fine. Again, the, okay. So there's a lot of reasons, right? There's a lot of reasons. One of them is is patronage. In the case of universities, you will see people receiving these positions because of patronage. I, I can give you a very specific example right now. Is that we have a Purdue pres Purdue University's president was a former governor of Indiana. How did he get on board the 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 Purdue, the, how did he become Purdue University's president? But, but previously being the Indiana governor, he got that because he put the people uh, at Purdue University's board of trustees on, on the board. It's political patronage sometimes. It's you're paying, you're paying someone off. That's my question is, what does he do as a job? Do you think he does nothing? Do you think the school could run without a president? <laughs> I'm saying as a function, that's you asked what would be the function, right? Yeah, so I'm asking what do they like what do they do as a job? I'm asking what he does as a job. A lot of money for not doing work. You asked me what was the what was... Yeah, I'm just I'm, I don't know why you would pay like these people could all be if we live in a greedy capitalist society, which you probably agree with. <laughs> Then why would people waste money paying like bullshit jobs or middle managers? Again, I I I, I invite I you to read a book, Bullshit Jobs. If you want to understand why you would pay somebody because I, I, I'm going to be honest, I, why, I haven't... Why, um, bull, bullshit Jobs, is like, that's like a pop econ book. Why would you appeal to this? <laughs> okay, l l a little low-key, yes, but it, it's 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 certainly a great read on the economy. It's by an, a no, it's, very it's, acclaimed anthropologist, David Graeber. But like that's where I'm coming from, Destiny, and I'm like, you're just saying idealistic truisms. I'm not talking... Wait, hold on, wait, wait, for what, what am I'm I saying? talking about idealistic truisms? You're just like, well, if we live in a capitalist society... And if everyone is out to make as much money as possible, well, the only thing that they would do is the thing that makes the most the most money as possible. And of course, there, there are so many other factors. And one of the ones I'm trying to bring in again and again is patronage, right? Hold on, that's that's not the case. There can be reasons why people don't act like that. We haven't even begun the conversation. I'm just trying to ask if you had any reasons why. So like somebody could say, for instance, if you go to your job for more hours, you can earn more money. Don't people want to earn more money? So then why doesn't everybody work 60 hours a week? And you might counter, <laughs> yeah. and you might counter, well, yeah, people could earn more money, but some people value other things like spending time with friends or family more than earning money. That's why they don't all work two jobs or 60 hours a week. And I go, okay, that's a good counter. So my question for you was, if you have a board of investors that represent people that own stock in a company, why would they choose to throw millions of dollars away at a CEO that's just costing them money when they could just pocket that money. There's got to be some reason why. And I'm asking you what that reason is. If you don't have an answer, then you just don't know. But maybe you do have an answer, and then that would be like the next part of the conversation. We can talk about that answer. <laughs> I, I just told you one, p p patronage, right? In the, in the case you want to no, pay no, a patronage university doesn't make any the sense. university exec did something nice, so you pay him back. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to engage with that. Can you give me an example of this? I just gave you one. The Purdue, the president of Purdue University, right now. So you think that the president of Purdue University like doesn't do any work? He's only there because he <laughs> gave the school something. Bro, okay, okay. The, let's let's define like colloquially work, right? I really wouldn't consider it work if my job was board of trustee meetings, meeting with alumni, throwing parties, doing speeches, <laughs> show, showing up to fundraiser and student events. That's not that's not really like work, you know what I mean? So you don't think he he adds any value to the school that justifies him being the president? I don't know anything I about him. He but... adds, I think he adds significantly. I think university presidents across the United States and CEOs and executives of all kinds add very little to their organizations compared to what how they're compensated. Yes, obviously. Then, then why do people waste money on him? Oh, you said it's because of patronage. Well, um, I mean, one reason, but the other reason is like explicitly, like this is the capitalist hierarchy, right? There no, needs to not. be that's people. Not what, that's not. That's not what the capitalist hierarchy is. There's nothing to do with the capitalist uh, hierarchy. Uh, okay. It has nothing to do with capitalism. <laughs> people getting paid more for not doing work. No, that has nothing to do with capitalism. <laughs> like that, the economic system. Let's be clear: the economic system of the United States has nothing to do with how people are paid? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, but, but, paying but, paid more to do less work is not capitalism. That no. is capitalism. Yes, you are paid more to do even less. I Please read a book, Destiny. Can you give me an example of a book that you've read that's not a pop econ book written by an anthropologist about <laughs> economics? 
Uh, I mean, plenty, man. Like, okay, I one. think um, I, I made some videos about Vosh, but uh, Wait, I was going to recommend Wait, hold on. Give me one. You're, you're appealing to an authority that you don't have. I don't know why you keep doing this to me. We can have a discussion right. about economics without having to cite a book. And when you're giving me a pop econ book written by an anthropologist, that's pretty controversial. <laughs> and then you're trying to, like, pull that as credentials against Controversial? You haven't even read. What? <laughs> Any pop X book is going to be controversial, probably for oversimplifying. Dude, the fuck dude, David Graeber's field. work is. Uh, I, I'm, you're questioning his integrity without knowing a thing about the author. You haven't even seen the cover of the book, and you're judging, bud. I'm not judging. I'm. I'm asking you to give me any. David David Graeber's history of debt. I, I mean, like that. That book is conclusive. I, I don't know, bro. Like he has good work. I value his work. You should go check it out before you're gonna sit here and bullshit me and say, "Oh, well, this pop econ book. That's so. That's so. Like what? How, what? What is your major? <laughs> the deflection. You're, you've deflected the whole conversation. I'm just curious what you're majoring on. Sociology and political science. Okay, if you're writing a paper in a poli sci class, you can't yes. just say and go. I, you can't just say go read this author. I'm pretty sure it's part of your. T I don't know because I'm a college dropout, so maybe I didn't get this far. And you guys write advanced papers. I don't know about. But my guess is going to be is that if you have to write in a given class about a given topic, you probably have to cite the ideas and the justifications for those ideas that the authors that you're reading gave you. You can't just say like, oh well, what's the answer to this? Oh well, go read. Um, you know, Jonathan okay, yeah, go but read. man, you Q also movie. caught me. You also caught me at 11 p.m. after work. I, I I could go crack open the book. Well, the fact um, that you're telling like, me you have to, to crack honest, open the like, book I want to do don't... something a little off the cuff. And I'm saying if you want more, if you want like, if you want the best, you're either going to have to catch me another time or you're going to have to read the, the source material yourself. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Okay. I'm not trying to dodge you. Gotcha. Be clear. Okay. Are you in like some uh, Pell Grant stuff or are you actually paying out of pocket for school? <laughs> um... Do I have do I have to disclose my finances on stream? You don't have to, but I was gonna say if you're paying out of pocket, you should just flunk school now and don't waste your money on a degree. If you're just gonna tell people to read a book because you can't communicate a simple idea to somebody, I don't know why the f you would go to college and then when oh you have a debate God. against somebody that's a college dropout, your appeal oh is, God. well, go read this pop book that wasn't even assigned in any of your classes. I don't know why you would appeal to that. Like if you're a junior in college oh and you're God. doing a sociology okay. degree, why can't you tell? Why don't you sound like an educated person that can give me an educated answer? Well, I don't understand. I'm just saying save the money. Read Wikipedia, what? do what you do, good hey, luck. Hey. Okay, what a fucking waste of time.